there everyone, welcome back to James Redman TV and yes I am milking the um, Shabosle news but he is now officially announced and he's also confirmed as our new number 8. Now I don't usually like talking about shirt numbers, I'm not one of those guys who's like oh you got a shirt, it's a shirt number, as long as you play good or footy that's all I care about. But if we are going to hold any heritage to these numbers, it's very interesting to see another player just get given the, the number eight but you know the bars on the floor with navigator so the, it can only go better from here and um, but yes it is confirmed that he is going to be our new number eight i want to talk about the you know the value that is attached to that number is it something that is so big that we shouldn't have given a new signing because i think we all agree or most of us agree he has potential to be a world class player one of the best players who like Guys, just watch him. I know people say, like, oh, I haven't watched him. But you can see the technique. As long as he just has this, if this is here, it, well, we have got a hell of a player. And the reason why I raised the question is because Naby Keita, for instance, it looked like he was going to be a hell of a player. But we didn't take into consideration the mental side of things. Also, he was nowhere near the technical uh, or had the technical ability of um, Dominic. So that's why we've got to look at that situation slightly differently. He was also a huge signing like Dominic is. So from a marketing standpoint, I get it. So for that reason, if you want to sell more shirts, it's quite good for Liverpool to have a number eight. And it's also good for Liverpool to make money. If you're going to buy shirts, you might as well have more of an incentive. And I think if you see the number eight on a, on a player's shirt and Dominic's playing well, more people are going to purchase it. So I'm looking at this from a standpoint of, you know, the marketing team, if they're going to be wanting to maximise the funds that they can make from shirts, which in turn only benefits Liverpool, then yes, you, you do you do need a number eight. So there's that side of it. But then I want to go back to the value attachment. The value attachment that Steven Gerrard wore that number, not only with pride, but also with elegance and quality. It was brilliant. For years and years and years, he was just the guy who won every single game. And you looked at him for them moments of brilliance. You looked at him to drag you out of situations. It was a beautiful, beautiful period. It, and, and he'd done different roles. He was the attacker midfielder, centre midfielder, defensive midfielder. And he really did make that number something special. And when you see Birmingham City going ahead, going ahead and retiring numbers for, for Jude and Job, you're thinking, why, why can't we at least let these players in? this shirt number why can't we at least let them so then that's where you've got to sit there and say what do you care about more do you care about maximizing finances because i guarantee putting a number eight on a uh, dominic is going to get more share sales than if he was number 17 which was his number at leipzig uh, or number i don't know number 12 i don't know whatever number was available uh, that you usually give an attacker maybe one in the 20s um i, I can tell you now there will probably be a significantly less um, amount of money being generated from those shared sales so and it's just a factor it's a factor and i understand that factor because it is about maximizing the revenue for the football club um, especially this specific football club with the owners that we've got because uh, i think if you're maybe a, a real madrid you're trying i mean to be fair they've probably done the same in the past i could be looking into it and it could just be because i'm scouts and steven gerrard is, is steven gerrard but I, I know that this has been a prevalent debate in the past that you know should we just give willy-nilly, like it's free candy, the, the number eight share to people. Uh, if you want to hold the number eight to any value, then no, you shouldn't do that. Um, but then what is value? Is it just what a fan would determine? Like, oh, he deserves it, he doesn't deserve it. Or is it maximising that revenue? Uh, but I, but then I do want to lead on to the point that I think Dominic's going to fill that shirt in brilliantly. I think, guys, I'm so... Like, I just watch more and more clips of him. Um, and I love what I see. And I understand when people say to me, well, James, you, you never watched Nunes and you jumped quick on Nunes. But again, I analyse attributes of a player and I think, okay... Can this player, uh, can these players' attributes be combined with an elite mentality and create a great footballer? Um, the mentality part for Nunes, you know, I think it's already there. I think he's a confident lad and I think he works hard for the team and I admire it. Um, but then I will always, always say, you know, um, you, you know, you don't want to pay money for just marathon sprinters. You want to pay money for the best of the best people in class. And I think when you look at Dominic, I think he's been that guy who's always been the best in his school or the best in his team and the best going through the Hungary national team and then the best at Salzburg, then the best at Leipzig, pretty much. And he's used to being the best guy. And I think he can come into our team, and I mean this, I think he can be the best guy. I don't think Darwin Nunes was that guy who was ever the best in anything. You know, maybe he was the best in school, but I don't think he was ever the best going through an academy or, you know, even for Uruguay or whatever have you. Um, and that's not me slandering Nunes. It's just because I've seen people ask me the question, well, James, you didn't have this same energy for Nunes. 
as you do for, for Dominic. Uh, and again, I want to go back to the fact that I analyse attributes. And when I saw Nunes was kind of like for like for Salah, I, I did notice that was probably more long term. And I've accepted that that's long term. I still question if it will be a successful long term signing. But I see people just getting upset over that all the time. So I won't even talk further on it. But it's just a comparison because I understand you could sit there and think like, James, why, why, why are you being so nice to this player and not to this? It's not being nice or not nice. It's about being honest with what I see. And when I watch Dominic, I, do, I, I really do believe it. This is why I want you to know there's no agenda. It's not an FSG agenda. It's not everything is bad for views agenda. Um, I love this signing. That's why I've done seven videos on it. It's brilliant. It's fantastic. It's great. It's one of those people that I think can really bring us forward. And this is a signing that has made me have a difference in mindset of, not only could we compete for top four next year, we could actually go back into a title race next year. Um, injuries have got to go well. We still need another centre-back, in my opinion. Um, and, and, and it wouldn't hurt to even bring in a couple of other players. But at the end of the day, if I see one more... If we get another midfielder, wow, that'd be brilliant. A defensive midfielder would be great. And then, of course, a centre-back would be ideal. If we, if we do that, it, it's it's a perfect window. Yes, off the back of numerous bad ones, but listen, you, 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 can, on, you can only start a new fresh. And if FFG have woken up and they do this for the next 10 years, then, you know, we can finally say, you know what, we like hard owners. They're doing better for the team. Um, it'd be a long time for me to get to that conclusion. I'm certainly not FSG in. And, and those people who are now... Uh, coming out and saying like, oh, why aren't you saying FSG out now? Listen, it, it, let's not jump the gun. I, I'm still very much, I've got my reasons to why I don't like FSG and, and there's many reasons above transfers. But then if you want to include transfers, that's another one why um, they're not always in my best books. But this was a good piece of business and I always say it's a counterbalance thing. You've got a list of good things that they've done. You've got a list of bad things and I think they've got a longer list of bad things. But guess what? They've still done some ma magnificent things and, and and that's not me trying to give them leeway, but I'm just saying you've got to be fair, you've got to be balanced and this was a great addition to the team and I think Jürgen Klopp's going to love this sign. I do, I think he's going to absolutely adore this player. Um, and, and, li and listen, he's here till 2028, I believe as well, so he's on a long-term deal. Don't really have to worry too much about him going elsewhere and then if we can improve, if we can not only get back in the Champions League but start acquiring those trophies, then fantastic. And, and let's have a look at the player that we're getting based on what he's achieved. He's won two um, DFB co uh, Pochals, I think they're called. It's basically like the German FA Cup. He's won two of those, I think, back-to-back. -back. And not only has he won two of those, he's also qualified hungry um, for the Euros in 2020. Um, he's also been a big, significant part of beating the England team 4-0 when Hungary beat England 4-0 not too long ago. Um, and I said before that he was Leipzig's best player. Now that I'm thinking, Nkunku could probably be that guy. Um, but I think Dominic, he, you know, if he weren't that guy, he was the second guy. You know, he's just one of those guys that, you know, I think he'll be... I think he can end up being the best player in the team. Him or Trent. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. But yeah, he gets the number eight. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And out of everything that we talked about, what do you think is more beneficial? The club generating more revenue because they're giving them a more, I don't want to say flashy number, but yes, one that stands out more. You know, eight stands out more than 17. So is it better that they're going for the revenue option? Or do you think that we should attach more value to that number with the legacy that was created by Steven Gerrard? And then how it was just taught off good shreds by a fella who's now a Verde Bremen. Absolute joke of a man, Nabby. Nabby, lad, I'm fuming with you. I'm not going to lie, I tried to defend you for years as well, but you've, you've, you've led to this conversation now. If you were just good in the Liverpool... To be fair, if he was good in the Liverpool shirt, then highest the bar for, for Shabo, you know what I mean? But guys, please do smash a like on this video. Uh, we are going to be going live tonight. I'm going to be getting a, a friend of mine on the stream. His, his name's going to be Rams. Uh, his, na his name is Rams. going to be Rams. Like if his name's Steven, now it's going to be Rams later. No, he's Rams, and he's going to jump on. We're going to have a few debates. But the first hour, it's going to be just me and you. He's going to jump on a little bit later. As we like to do. And what's pretty cool is that more YouTubers are now coming back. Because they've been uploading all year. I've only been uploading over the summer. So they're having their break. I haven't had my... I, you know, I've had a long break here. So I'm, I'm fully in. So I can't wait to start doing collaborations. And I believe the channel, as it is already growing significantly, I think it's only going to keep growing at a boss, boss rate. And I love every single one of you for it, guys. Can't take it for granted, you know what I mean? Uh, the channel's nothing without you guys. If you don't tune in, it doesn't make revenue. Therefore, there's not much point. But the fact that I can enjoy it and then do it on a more frequent basis because you guys make it a job, uh, it's boss. Thank you so much. And yeah, I'll leave it there with the cringiness and up the shop. Oh, see you in a bit.